Hey everybody, Marty Mazzura. Hello again, I should say. It's Friday the 24th, 2023, second time today. Earlier I did the stock market snapshot, but the narrative in that one for the first, first few minutes is what I really want clients hearing. I do want you to take a look at the charting as well, but more than anything, I want you to catch my narrative on the market as we see it today. So if you haven't seen that one, you know, either stop this one, go back to that one or do it right after this one, if you would. Okay. So in front of you is the PWA index. And as you can see, it's going in the wrong direction, right? We had like a seven point decline here down to, I want to say a negative 29 currently. And so again, you know, this is, it's not unusual. Every, you know, all things get noisy, get choppy, you know, right back in here in August of 2019, when we went into the red and we, we started hedging portfolios, you know, we came out of it a little bit, tested it a few times and then had quite the run lower came up and then we're, we're in pretty good shape economically in through here, broke through, came up, tested the zero line a couple times, and now just kind of working our way down in what would be a downtrend line. Our base case is that recession is coming this year and stocks are not yet pricing in the earnings reality that comes with recession. So that's our story. We're sticking to it for the moment, but we're going to continue to do the work day in and day out, keep an open mind, listen to other narratives, and then report to you on what we see. Okay. In terms of today's inputs, remember there are 45 in total and each week I grab a sampling of some of them and I th that I think are worth talking about that maybe move the needle. Maybe they came out this week like this one, which is, uh, consumer spending. That data came out today with some inflation data and got a nice big monthly ramp, 1.8% uh, on a month over month basis. So relative to December in January, folks got out and spent some money. In terms of personal income, that actually rose a little bit as well. It rose by 0.6% on a month over month basis. So that's a good thing. And these, both of these are in excess of what economists had anticipated. What also is in excess of what economists had anticipated to a not small degree is inflation. You know, it's been coming off the boil quite notably, but as you can see here, right, we, uh, we took a jump higher. I'm gonna make that line thinner here. So we, um, so yeah, so as you can see here, you know, we spiked up a little bit from five to 5.4% 5 on the headline on the core, which X's out food and energy. We're up there as well year over year and up a big 0.6% on a month over month basis. Stocks at one point were down the S and P one and three quarters percent today, the NASDAQ 2%. They actually closed with the S and P down 1.05 and, um, the NASDAQ just over 2%, 208 basis points. So rough day pretty much across the board for the market. In terms of our core positions, I can kind of give you a feel for sectors and how they did by just looking at our core. Um, so MP materials was up, oil services stocks was up, material stocks, interestingly, was up. Um, financials were up a little bit and I, even utilities were up on a day when bonds were selling off. So that's interesting. So we had a handful of things that were up, had a lot of things obviously that were down. And I get into the weeds in the earlier video on our inflation view, short term, and then more importantly, our long term structural view, if you will. That's why I really want you watching the earlier video today. Personal savings rate actually went up, you know, and I'm going to say that's a good thing. From an economic perspective, it could be a warning sign, right? That if people are suddenly um, now beginning to save more of their income, maybe they're not going to spend more of their income, right? Or by definition, I guess they're not. And maybe they're beginning to uh, see some signs that are making them a little uncomfortable. 4.5 is still, you know, historically low, you know, certainly by re recent history standards, but, um, you know, it is, it is moving up here a little bit. Mortgage purchase apps 
Uh, literally, you got to go back like 30 years. What is it? 1994-ish, 1995 levels. Um, the 30-year mortgage rate is up to like 6.8% right here. But this does not speak well of general conditions, obviously, certainly not for housing, although existing home sales did surprise to the upside. That's not one of our indicators. We have several other housing indicators, but it certainly is one that we track and, and pay attention to. And that actually, again, rose this week for January's numbers, while a lot of the housing data has been pretty negative of late. Heavy truck sales surprised me to the upside. So we're still sticking with this uptrend here on heavy truck sales. And that historically has been a not unimportant um, economic indicator. I'll put it that way. I wanted to take a look at commodities, right? Speaking of inflation, because again, as I said in the earlier video, I didn't want to repeat all that, but you know, we have inflation ramping up and it's about to come down, folks. It's about to come down because of base effects, year over year dynamics. And it's about to come down because I'm pretty certain that we're right on our economic thesis that there's going to be some noticeable slowing and that's going to bring inflation down as well. But I'll stop there because I did that on the previous one. But, you know, our Bloomberg Commodities Index, as you can see, continues to roll over and that's a disinflationary force. Uh, this sure looks a lot like a bull flag to me. As you can see right now, we're sitting on a 38 percent retracement, which is kind of key, 38, 50 and 62 of this big rally off the bottom that we think is just the beginning of a secular bull market in commodities. But absolutely, you know, commodities are volatile. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And we expected them to come down as the economy begins to come down. Um, bear flags tend to retrace as much as 50%. So if this does that, you know, then we've got a bit lower to go. Um, at some point, you know, we're, we're going to be adding to our commodities positions, but we think it's going to be a little later in the year when we actually do get the washout that we're expecting. I wanted to jump to copper as well. Copper is kind of bucking that trend. It's obviously a component in the previous indicator, the Bloomberg indicator, but here we actually popped up. And, you know, there's a lot of bullish news coming out of China in terms of what they promised to do. Uh, relative to boosting their economy in 2023. And there are some real headwinds. We can get deep into the weeds and the bearish case for China succeeding there this year. But I can tell you, they are going to bring a tremendous amount of resources to bear to come back and to be able to claim success coming out of those draconian lockdowns that they did for so long. I wanted to include the Baltic Dry Index. Last time it was in free fall. Um, this is you know, shipping across the world's oceans. It does speak to, to emerging markets. China is huge, obviously. And um, what we did talk about here, though, is the seasonality of this as well. Uh, you can see at the beginning of years, uh, we do tend to see this thing come down. You know, lots of things can impact this. I mean, the supply of ships, you know, can, can impact it when th things are really ramping up, you know, more ships are going to come online. And so you've got capacity that can bring prices down. But I think this was China lockdown, maybe some seasonal factors. My point today is that we had quite the big, like a 300 point jump week over week. So that's something to keep an eye on. And that coincided with that little bit of a spike that I just showed you in copper as well. Uh, last two slides here would be the treasury bond, or I should say the S&P 500 to treasury bond ratio. So when this is going up, stocks are outperforming bonds. When it's going down, bonds are outperforming stocks. It does, in theory, speak to the economy. Bonds tend to outperform stocks when the economy is not doing so well. So as you can see here recently, Bonds have been outperforming stocks. As you can see on this ratio, we have a lower high and we're beginning to turn south. So that really comports with our thesis. As we believe recession becomes real, bonds should rally long-term treasuries as, as yields come down and as people look to get defensive. And, um, and this should probably roll over. I think we'll be looking at that in the weeks and perhaps months to come. And then lastly, kind of along those lines is the staples to discretionary ratio. So when this line is going up, consumer staples are outperforming consumer discretionary stocks, right? So the companies that would be staples companies are things that you pretty much got to buy if you want to stay alive. Discretionary sector encompasses the companies 
that you go and spend money at when you have discretionary income. So as you can see so far this year, as we know, you know, discretionary has been outperforming staples quite noticeably. The ratio is a negative 12, right, from the beginning of the year. And so we saw that, that, that huge bounce back from discretionary, which were a disaster last year. Um, but we're beginning to come back. That makes more sense to us relative to what's going on in the economy. And when you look at them individually, there's XLY, which is a discretionary ETF. And then you can see that there's XLP kind of hanging in there. Oh, these last, oh, not that long, last week or so. But uh, even here, right, you have you have looks like the, the makings of a downtrend and you've got it here. I mean, staples will will go down, you know, when the market gets sold off. It's just in recessionary conditions, they tend to go down a lot less than discretionary stocks. So folks, we think there continues to be the evolution of this moving toward, you know, our recessionary thesis. Now there are countervailing data, you know, the jobs data has been pretty good. I thought I had jobless claims dialed up. They actually were down 2000 week over week. Um, so again, jobless claims continue to impress. Job numbers tend to peak and jobless claims tend to trough very soon before recessions begin. So when you hear people say, oh, you can't have a recession amid such good employment numbers, oh my, how I beg to differ. History says something dramatically different than that, that recessions tend to start quickly off of what look like really good impressive levels in the employment numbers. So folks, I'm gonna leave it there. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Hope this is all helpful. Thanks for watching and listening. Talk to you soon, bye-bye.